Hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about types of chemical reactions. I've got three different examples of chemical reactions, different types on each one up there. And by the end of this, I'm hoping that you're going to be able to look at the reactants and predict the products based on the type of chemical reaction that takes place. Well, our first type of reaction that we're going to need to know is a synthesis reaction. Synthesis means joining together. And if you look at this picture right over here, we got the skinny bird joins together with the fat worm and becomes a fat bird. Remember, this is our product because it's pointing, this is our product because the arrow is pointing to it. This would be our reactants. And so we have two or more reactants and they make one product. Now I'm going to be listing some keys for kids and I'm going to put a star next to them so you should make sure you have these on your notes, your keys for kids. What you're looking for in a synthesis reaction is one product. If you see one product then the best chance that that is going to be a synthesis reaction. Now I'm going to give you a sample equation. We could have potassium, uh, solid potassium, react with oxygen gas which is O2 and it's going to, they're going to join together. They have nothing else that they can do but join together. So when they join together, they are going to make potassium oxide, but not KO2. We have to check the charges. O has a minus 2 charge. K has a plus 1 charge. So it's actually going to be K2O, not KO2. That's a big mistake that students make. They want to add them together, kind of like in math class, but it makes K2O. Now again, you may not like that there's two potassiums on this side and only one over here, but we'll take care of that when we do balancing equations. Okay, our next type of reaction is a decomposition reaction. Decomposition means decomposing or breaking down. And if you look at our picture, we had inside here, this is our only reactant right inside here. And in the egg, that egg breaks apart and it produces products. These are our products. It produces the eggshell and the cute little turtle. I don't know how that big turtle got in that little egg. But this is a generic term right here, AB. You had a compound, and it breaks down to usually make its elements that, it, that were forming that compound. Now here's our key for kids. Our key for kids thing we're watching for to see if it's a decomposition reaction is this. Is there only one reactant? And remember, the reactants are on this left-hand side of the arrow. I'll give you a sample of an actual decomposition reaction. We could have MgO, magnesium oxide. Those charges cancel out. That's why there's no subscripts. That's our one reactant. So it's going to break down to produce magnesium. And guess what else it's going to produce? If it made magnesium, it can't make carbon. It can't make iron. Oxygen is the other thing it makes, but oxygen is a diatomic element, so we have to put O2 on there. That's a decomposition reaction. Now our next type of reaction is called a single replacement reaction. It also could be called a single displacement reaction, and that would mean the same thing. So if you look at our generic formula, we have a single element, reacts with a compound. Remember, this is reacts with. Reacts with a compound to produce a different compound and another single element. And so if you notice what happened here, the A and the B really switched places. The A, and before we had the A all by itself and the B, C together, and then we have the A, C by itself in the, in the products and the B all together. So here in this little picture right here, you can see, oh, the handsome gentleman and the nice couple. And then afterwards, uh-oh, handsome gentleman and flipping that girl all around and poor guy over here. So I'm going to give you an example of an actual one. And we're going to try to predict the products on this one based on what we've seen. So we have, if we have calcium nitrate, which is CaNO3 taken twice, plus magnesium, reacts with magnesium. Now what we're going to do is we're going to predict the products together. This is our compound right here, and this is our single element. And so we know that this single element is going to come over here and replace something, single replacement. And so since it is a metal, it will replace the other metal. And so what we'll have is we will have magnesium joined up now with NO3. But here's the tricky part. We have to check the charge. Magnesium is a plus 2 charge. NO3 is a minus 1 charge. So in this case, the, we still have two NO3s, but we don't just copy over from right over here. We don't copy over the subscripts. Now, 
the magnesium kicked out the calcium and so the calcium is going to be all by itself you see the metals replace metals if this were a non-metal or a polyatomic ion it would replace this other part right here and join up with the metal our next type of reaction is a double replacement reaction also could be called double displacement I'll, sometimes I'll say either one reaction and if you notice what happens in our generic one, we had a compound, AB and CD, react with each other. And notice what happens. A now joins up with D and C joins up with B. Now, take a look at this, though, because the metals are always written first. So the metal A and the metal C really switch partners with the, each other. They do the old switcheroo. Our key for kids in checking this one out is you might see two ionic compounds in reactants. If you see two ionic compounds in reactants, then probably going to be a double displacement reaction. Now, if you look at our picture here of these guys, then you can see we have this bigger gentleman and the skinnier gentleman, and they each have hats on, but afterwards, they did the old switcheroo with the hats. You still have the same players in here and the same hats, they just switched around. So let me show you a actual chemical reaction that would happen here. And so we'll do this in blue. We could have potassium hydroxide, which is KOH, reacting with calcium sulfate, at CaSO4. The charges all cancel on each one of those, so we're, we don't have to crisscross on them. Now, let's predict the products, though. Remember, this metal right here and this metal are going to do the old switcheroo on, in this case, their polyatomic ions. So when they do the old switcheroo, we have potassium now joined up with SO4. Four. And we have to check the charges. SO4 is a minus 2. Potassium is a plus 1. So we have to crisscross. You see, we have to know how to crisscross each time. Plus, calcium now joins up with hydroxide. OH, but you know what we have to do, right? Check the charges. Okay, so calcium is a plus 2 from the periodic table. Hydroxide is a minus 1 from the back of our periodic table. So I have to crisscross and we get a 2 right there. We'll take care. I realize there's only one potassium here and there's two there. There are is only one hydroxide here and there's two there. We'll take care of that at a later date. But we just need to write the skeleton equation right now by checking the charges. Next type we have is a combustion of a hydrocarbon. First of all, we need to know what a hydrocarbon is. Hydrocarbon is when you have any combination of carbons and hydrogens. There could be oxygens in there too. Combustion means burning. In order to burn something, we have to react it with oxygen. And so I've got some samples right down here. This is methane. Methane is CH4. And uh, this is reacting with oxygen. And here's what they always produce. They always are going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Maybe different amounts, but each time they're going to do that. So our key for kids is that we have um, always have oxygen as a reactant. And another thing is we have CO2 plus H2O as products. But a lot of times we don't always see the products. Sometimes we have to predict the products. So, for example, if we had something like C2H5, then if, if it was combustion of a hydrocarbon, we would react that with oxygen, and that would always produce CO2 and H2O. Every time you burn a hydrocarbon, that's what it's going to make, CO2 and H2O. All right, so now I want you, this is not the end, but this is a little uh, intermission, let's just say. And so I want you to predict the reaction type of each of these pictures right here based on your keys for kids. Look at your keys for kids. We have A and then BC and then we have B and AC, so on and so forth. Some of these pictures you're going to have to figure out. Uh, we got a cute little kangaroo in a tennis shoe and then another kangaroo in another tennis shoe and then they switch tennis shoes. So you figure out for each one of these what type of reaction they are. Go ahead and write those down, A through G. Just on a little side note, too, I want to let you know that you have combustion reactions that are going on inside your body. Combustion reactions don't have to have fire. They can just produce heat. And you break down a hydrocarbon, which is glucose, using oxygen, you make water and carbon dioxide and heat energy that you need in your body each day. So finally now we've reached the end. 
and I have five problems here for you to predict the products for. The first thing you have to do is determine the type of reaction. When you determine the type of reaction, then you can predict the products and you can check the charges. Notice we have a compound and a single element. That's a key for kids. We have a single reactant. We have two compounds for our reactants. We have two elements for our reactants and then we have a hydrocarbon and oxygen. You should be able to predict these products and write them out and then also check the charges when necessary on each one of those. You can do this. If you don't know how you think you're having trouble, go back and watch the each type of reaction and they're all represented there. Have a great day.